Hi, and welcome to New and Improved. I'm Zachary, and this is our Google Home unboxing and first look. All right, so let's get into the package. First thing we got to do is we got to open up these little red flaps over here on the side. There's two of them, one on each side. And as soon as we've done that, the unit should just slide right out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the cover. There's a little magnetic clasp, and then the front opens, revealing the unit itself. So let's take the unit out of the box. And then here we're also going to pop out this little flap. Under here we'll find our usual guides and instructions. The charging adapter is here. Very nice. It's got a flat cable, so no tangling, hopefully. Uh, and this nice rubber strap to keep it from opening. And that's really it. All right, now on to the unit itself. To open up the bottom, we can just pull that off. It's magnetic, which is really nice. Just pops right back on. On the back, we've got our mute button. And then on the top, we've got a touchpad that we can use to control the volume and other things like that. The charging cable is nice. It's very premium. The cable does not disconnect from the adapter, however, and the power connector is proprietary. It's time to set up the device. First, we need to plug in the power connector on the bottom of the unit, then plug it in. Next, the boot sound will play, and then open the app on your device. Follow the instructions to complete the setup. Let's move on to my first impressions on the Google Home. Having used it for more than a few days, its features are starting to show. I set Home up in just 10 minutes, and after a quick update, it was ready for use. I immediately was impressed with Home's speaker quality, and I will elaborate more during my full review, so get subscribed so you don't miss it. One gripe, though. Unlike Amazon Alexa, Google Home rarely works if I'm more than 10 feet away, but I'll reanalyze this in my full review. But for now, this could be a deal breaker. After setting Google Home up, I immediately put it to the test. Using IFTTT to control my LifeX light, you can check out my review of it here. Although Philips Hue, Nest, and Samsung SmartThings all work with Google Home natively, any product that is IFTTT compatible will also work. After programming an applet, I can now say, OK Google, kitchen light, and my light turns on or off based on its current state. Over the past few days, I have noticed that my family uses home more than I thought they would. For example, my brother enjoys playing Mad Libs every once in a while, and my dad recently asked home for the hours of a nearby Chinese restaurant. Google Home has become a useful asset in our lives, and one that we don't see getting rid of anytime soon. Speaking of Google Home becoming an asset, it has a design that fits well into any home. It has an interchangeable base, different colors are available on the Google Store for $20 and $40, and a white top that will undoubtedly get dirty since it is a touch-sensitive pad for volume and starting and stopping music. Home also comes with a long cable, so placement will most likely not be an issue. For now, these are my first impressions. My full review will be up in a few weeks, where I'll elaborate on my experiences so far. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our website or one of our recent videos. Our Twitter handles are up here. Until next time, I'm Zachary from New and Improved. See you on the next review.